the torch and the kings and the spread of the wind and the soul of all the songbirds, they sang all the wrong words. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. episode 207. It's the 14th of December 2017. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm Emily. I'm glad you're here. I hope you are well. I have a gift for you. Um, I have about eight or nine, eight or nine patterns in my Ravelry store and I wanted to make a little gift to the Fiber Townies out there and that is a coupon code for half off of any of my patterns. Um, the code is holidays 2017, the numbers, and um, you should enter that and get a little gift of a pattern for half off. A couple of patterns of mine that I use all the time I thought I'd share briefly. One is the MPG, which is this cowl. I made mine out of hand spun, but any sort of DK weight yarn with a nice drape should work beautifully. Um, I wear this constantly. It's got a cowl, but you can do this if the wind is really bad. Um, I usually just wear it like this and it does have two sizes. You can pull it down over your shoulders if you so choose. I did mine out of a BFL silk. Beautiful gradient. And the other that my whole family have been wearing are my reflecting lights. No, reflecting light mitts. Um, and here are the ones I wear and now I'm sort of fighting my daughter for them. Because it snowed here this past uh, week and everyone thought that these mitts were amazing. This is the small pair. You can see this one's gotten dirty because people have been making snowballs with them. Um, and I had to wash them. These are out of Brooklyn Tweed Loft. They are so warm. Everyone was marveling at how warm and dry your hands stay in this yarn. And this pattern has got a lot of texture to it, which I think also increases the warmth of a fabric and just a little bit of color work on the wrists. So this is um, a pattern in three sizes. So that's just a few of them and some that I have been wearing constantly. Um, I do love that loft. It's super light as well as being warm. Hi Alice. So yes, I hope you enjoy and I am, no matter what you do this, these holidays, I hope you have a good time. So before we get into my FO of the week, I have an Ask Fiber Town. And I'm putting this at the beginning of the show because it's 
a very important matter. This is from String Bean, and she posts in Ask, the Ask Fibertown thread in our Ravelry group, I've lost my knitting and spinning mojo and don't know what to do. Any suggestions? What do you do when you just can't? And just this question is making me anxious because it's happened to me before. And I'm sure it's happened to many of you. And I wanted to put it out there um, to the community. What do you do when this happens? Because I've just blocked out what happens with me. I don't really know what answer to give you, String Bean. Um, but I bet other people will chime in. You can talk on the Ravelry group in this episode thread or on YouTube, leave a comment. It's not fun because it's, it's what most of us do, I venture to say all of us do, to relax and to unwind as well as to be creative. It's, it's what makes us feel good. So when you're not, when you've lost that, it's, it's a little scary. I will say, I'm pretty sure it's gonna come back because all things are temporary. So if you can keep that in mind, that's a big part of the battle. I have a very cute dog getting shoulder scratches down here. So Alice says you're going to be okay. Just ride it out and listen to what everyone else says and um, pick what works for you. And before you know it, you'll be back having a good time with your knitting and spinning. Um, okay, so let's do FO, although I can't show it with this little speckled dog up here. She, she's speckled. Um, I have a sewing FO. I started this last June, I believe, although it's been percolating in my head for longer than that. And it is my swing skirt from Alabama Channel Designs. It is completed. Here it is. It fits. I feel like it's wearing, I wear protect, I'm wearing protective armor when I wear this. I love it. I don't want to take it off. It's pretty amazing. I did the seams myself. I'm looking, I'm looking at this one. There's some issues with it, but that's okay. Look at that. So I did a felled seam. So each seam is sewn twice. There's my maker's mark right there. I did a cretin stitch to um, attach the Fold over elastic, and it's a big fold over elastic, relatively big, <clears throat> that I purchased from Alabama Channon, um, the website. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm coughing a bit. So this is what the interior looks like. It's reverse applique with the Alabama Channon jersey. And I love it. I love having it in my closet. It's just... It's like wearing armor that protects me, but it's soft. So yes, very pleased. Um, I think I want to make the corset out of jersey, just a plain, no applique or, or reverse applique, as well as the bolero, which my friend Fibertrek has made, and I've tried it on, and it's great. Excuse me, I think I have some fiber there. Hang on a sec. Alice had to go outside, and I'll probably have to get up to let her back in. Okay, so works in progress. I have one sock completed. This is my opal fresh and juicy. Do I have the ball band? I do not. This is in my Sarah Pomegranate Rust Dyed Bento. I've cast on the second one, and I've knit a bit. Knit the ribbing, and I'm, I've started the, the leg. This is my usual sock recipe. I never, I really don't do anything different. US one and a half needles, 64 stitches, my own way of doing it. Um, so I think I made this a bit longer than I usually do. This will probably be, this will definitely be for my husband. He will wear any socks. He loves crazy colored socks. So I will hopefully have enough to do shorties for me in the same. And we can be one of those weird couples that has matchy matchy hand knit socks. There aren't a lot of those out there, I reckon. Now, my other work in progress, um, 
Well, the only other one that's been worked on is a new one, and I've cast on a second avocado raglan out of my Blacker Yarns brushwork. This is the smudge colorway. This is this year's birthday yarn. It's gorgeous. Scottish Beaumont, Shetland, Gotland. I'm forgetting what else is in there, but it's lovely. So the avocado raglan is my own design, and I knit my first one out of hand spun Rambouillet that I dyed with the avocado pits. Hence the name, it's just stuck. So it's a raglan sweater top down with some cabling um, that flank, cab the cabling flanks the um, sleeve stitches. And it's, the raglan increases flank the cable. So the first one, I sort of wrote down what I did, but I didn't like the way I did the short rows for the back of the neck. So this time I'm doing them differently. Instead of just doing them along the back, I'm having them come past the raglan increases. And I need to redo that a bit because it's made, the way I did it, I had to do the increases on the purl side. And they just don't have the same look as the increases done on the right side. So I'll probably, I don't know if I'll rip this one back, but if I write the pattern, I will change that. And oh, let me let the dog in. So I've had some very nice folks say to me on Ravelry that they really liked the sweater and that they would knit it if I published it. And I'm, ha I'm, I'm having a bit of a dilemma there because uh, it's one thing to write a sock pattern or a mitten pattern or a cowl pattern or a shawl pattern um, and sort of do your own tech editing and have your test knitters help you with that. A sweater is different. You're putting something out there that's a, that's a big investment for people in terms of time and funds. So if you get it wrong, that doesn't feel good. Um, so I, I have a dilemma there because there's a ton of work that goes into that. And for a, most designers, unless you're really hustling and you're one of the big names or one of the bigger names, you're not going to get a return on that. You may not even really scratch the surface of paying a tech editor. You may not even be able to pay yourself um, once you deal with um, sort of yarn going to test knitters if you do that or paying the tech editor. I honestly don't know how much tech editors charge. But so I have a dilemma there. I don't know if I want to publish this for free and then say let the chips fall where they may, do this at your own risk, or look into getting a tech editor and so I have done some grading of the pattern. It ends up looking like this. Um, you know, just lots and lots of numbers and math and hoping that given the gauge, I have the inches right. But if you, you know, I would like to publish, if I were to publish a sweater, I would like to publish it in many, many, you know, five or six sizes seems about right. So I don't know. I don't know what to do. I, and I have to say that trying to knit this as I'm thinking all of, of, of all of these sort of variables is taking a bit of the joy out of the knitting. Although I think I've, I've got that on lockdown now. I don't, I think I've got a good rhythm going with it and I really can't do anything more with the pattern until I get sort of separating the armholes or separating for the sleeves rather. So I don't know. I don't know what to do. Uh, should I just knit this for me, or should I look into getting someone to tech edit it? You know, just based on my experience so far, it's a lot of work, and I don't know if it's worth the return. So, yeah, but the brushwork is lovely, and pattern, it's going to be an amazing sweater. It's not quite as purple as it looks here. It's much more muted in real life. And I really think the way I did the short rows this time is pretty good. Pretty good. So there's the back. And there's the front. So you can see that there's... Wait, where's the front? This is the back. This is the front. A lot more stitches on the back side. It comes down significantly, long, significantly more. So I'm using these... Um, 
Knitter's Pride, Knitter's Pride, Knit Pro, Zing, Knit Pro, Zing's Interchangeables um, that I got from the Wooly Thistle. I don't know if she still stocks them, but I know at least the interchangeables, but pretty sure she stocks Zing's still, and they're great. They're a really nice metal needle, and for an interchangeable, the join is really good. So, yep, that's what I'm knitting. Spinning. So I have been putting spinning and fiber prep back in my sort of self-care rotation. I'd gotten away for a while, and I do find both of them incredibly um, meditative. Stop. Please do not scratch me. Get down. So let me show you what I've done. And I've hopefully put in a video of me spinning, doing a chain ply, and, as well as... God, the dog is bug bugging me. You're bugging me. Um, as well as a video of me drum carding. And this is what I drum carded. A 2017 Merino Corydale first place ribbon at the Mendocino Wool Fest from Janet Hepler. I believe this is Shepherdess. And Sonoma Knit sent me this. This is what this is washed Merino Corydale. This is A plus fiber. I this is two passes through the drum carter drum carter. I don't know what's wrong with words today. I cannot say them. And it's Flippin' gorgeous. So it's a little more than two ounces. There was very, very little waste. It's simply gorgeous. It's what I'm going to spin next. It's really gorgeous. The other thing <clears throat> that I spun was my rainbow bat. It's not been washed yet. But this was a bat I made um, just with the rainbow colors and some tunis thrown in for good measure. So I spun it very fast, very unevenly, and chain plied it. And it's about 85 yards. Um, it'd be great striped with like a gray or even a white. So my very last thing to share with you today is my sewing. And I've just cut out a new top. It is this, the toaster sweater. And I'm gonna do this one. And I remember distinctly telling everyone after I made this version that the next one was going to be less cropped. And I completely forgot about that when I cut it out. So if it's really bad, I will give it to my 15-year-old. It'll be a little big on her, but that's okay. It'll be cozy because it's out of this the coziest fabric out there. It's a sweatshirt, a jersey. Oh, it's so soft. Super, super soft. So it's all ready to go. I might press stop and upload this and start sewing. Um, let's see, is that really everything I have to share with you? I think it is. So I hope you continue to enjoy your week and your holidays. And don't forget the code, HOLIDAYS2017. Take care until next time.